Our next guest is an Emmy Award winning actor whose career spans over six decades and yeah. showing no signs of slowing down. Oh. Anytime soon, please welcome the handsome, the legendary Glenn Turman. Oh. Hello. 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 Welcome to the show. We are so are excited you? and determined to have you. Oh, how are you? An honor to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm doing well. Thank you very much. I'm doing just fine. That's How are awesome. all of you? We're great. We're great now that you're here. And yeah. you know what? Your career began at the age of 12 in the Broadway production of A Raisin in the Sun alongside the late, great Sidney Poitier. What was that experience like? Oh, it was a, a, a wonderful, life-changing experience, actually. Uh, and um, working with Mr. P, as we call him, was just uh, was unbelievable, you know. He set me on the road to so many wonderful things, just, just being a mentor of mine over all of these years. I owe so much to him. He was, he was so gracious, you know. Very yeah. gracious, so yeah. I learned so many life lessons from him along the way, you know. Uh, and he was, just, just by watching him, I would pick up things that... Uh, Hopefully, I've carried with me over the years, you know, that have made me a better, a better person. Wow, wow. Like, like what? Well, one of the main things is how gracious he was to his public. Mm. Yeah. I remember as a youngster, we were in Chicago, and uh, Chicago was cold, as Chicago can be. Right. right? Mm. You know? and, uh, but he stood there, and he signed autographs for everybody who was waiting for him, you know? Oh. And I remembered later, I said, yeah, 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 that's... That's what you're supposed to do, so you know. Cool. They, they come to see you, they applauded you. Right. You know, show them the time. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm sure you're just as gracious. Um, well, I try Glenn, to. <laughs> Glenn, we also remember you as Preach in the cult classic Cooley High. Yes. Would, would you be open to a reboot of that movie? Oh, no. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Why? <laughs> he said, oh, no. <laughs> Oh, no, no, there's some things that you just leave alone, you know? Yeah. There's so many things uh, that I don't think could be recaptured. And, and, and I'll tell you, one of the main things, one of the main things that I don't think could be recaptured is uh, uh, the other star of the movie. Of course, Lauren Shelton Jacobs was the star, and I, I was uh, lucky enough to be one of the stars of the movie, you know, Jackie Taylor, some of the Chicago people yeah. and actors and actresses. But there was another star, thanks to Suzanne DePass. Motown oh, the was music. a star. The yeah. music yeah. from yeah. Motown. Take the soundtrack. Oh. You think of all the people who were uh, on those on that soundtrack, Smokey Robinson, yes. Stevie Wonder, The Four Tops, The Temps. You know, it was a great soundtrack. You couldn't afford to get the top people in the business who yeah. are the top names uh, in, this, in the music industry now uh, to be a part of a, of a piece like that. Do you, how so do you do great. that? Definitely. Well, you know what? Your resume just goes on and on. We loved you in A Different World yes, when you were cast as yeah. Colonel Taylor. Did you think that show yeah. would have the cultural impact on HBCUs, which I'm a part of, and the longevity that right. it still has today? Oh, no. When we were doing it, I had no idea. But we soon, it didn't take long for us to find out the impact that it had, you know, mm, because right. uh, we, we realized, and, and uh, thanks to uh, Debbie Allen and Susan Fales uh, keeping us abreast of things, that the enrollment for um, uh, historical black colleges and universities went up during uh, our tenure, you know. So we, we, we became aware of the impact that it had. You know, of course, I went to the... The UHK, you know, uh, that's the University of Hard Knocks. <laughs> you know, I got a, a, I was like, wait, oh, what? Yeah, well, I got, <laughs> that's a different university. Yeah, yes. I, I get, I, yeah well, I got my doctorate. Uh, trust me. So, <laughs> that <laughs> but, is hysterical. Uh, but, uh, so I didn't go to one. So I learned a lot just being a part of the show because I, hadn't, I mm -hmm. didn't have that experience at all, you know. One of my wow. favorite shows ever. Yes. Okay, switching gears a little bit, I actually found out that you love cowboy culture and horses. So how did you become oh, yeah. interested in them? I'm so curious. The short story is that I, I just always loved horses, even as a kid uh, growing up in Manhattan, you know, I'm from wow. Harlem, um, raised in the West Village. But I always, as a kid, you know, back in those days, the troop stands were on, on wagons, you know, and horses would pull those wagons. And there was, you know, mounted police in New York. And so I was always attracted to those horses. And, 
But that's just the, the short story. The longer story, if I can tell it quickly, yeah, yes. is that my grandfather was indeed a farmer, a rancher, had horses and mules oh. and all that down in oh. Georgia, where my people are from. Wow. So I kind of uh, came by it kind of honestly. It's kind of in the blood. Well, you know, your love of horses led to a big opportunity this summer. You were featured, and I saw you, in the Ivory Park Rodeo campaign. Tell Hello. us everything. Did Beyonce personally ask you, how does she smell? Is she nice? <laughs> I need to know. <laughs> Lonnie wants all the details. I want all the details. She, well, yes, she did ask. She did ask me personally. Oh. Uh, that came up at at the dinner table. We were having dinner. Uh, she and her her husband and my wife and uh, and uh, her mother in law, a mother, and, and um, um, Richard and, and Tina Lawson, and um, we were all having dinner. We were on, we were vacationing. Nice. If you really want to know the tea, <laughs> okay. Nice. Yes. We want okay. all the tea. Do you really want to know the tea? Yes. Okay. <laughs> We were all on vacation. Doesn't what? everyone vacation Is that how you with roll B and J? I mean, does it? How <laughs> lovely. Ooh. We were on vacation and uh, we were sitting in heaven and she was upset because she hadn't been able to finish a part of the uh, launch that she uh, was doing and she, she needed an, another segment of it. And, and the horse back riding thing didn't wasn't turning out the way she wanted it to and she needed a beautiful girl to who could ride horses and who could model as well and i just she, she said do you know anyone glenn and i said well b i don't know what took you so long to to come my way to ask me you know that's what i do that i have the ranch and so on so she said no but i didn't want to i said b come on i got you don't worry i got you so i went to my granddaughter and wow. who used to model when she was a little younger and who's a cowgirl, you know, she was raised on the ranch. And I uh, said, uh, Melinda, I said, um, uh, how do you feel about coming out of retirement for, for uh, B, do a, a, a layout for her new launch? And she said, oh, I don't know. I have to check my schedule. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh my so we had a lot of fun talking about that and messing around with it, you know. And of course, she they came out, and uh, I thought I was just going to hold the horses, you know, and shovel a little poop, you right. know, to keep the <laughs> area clean on the ranch. No. But um, you know, Tina, she talked me into try this jumpsuit on, Glenn, see if it fits. Oh, you know, right. you know, of course, she's she's the ultimate fashionista, yeah, you know. That's right. And. Uh, I try, oh, you look good. So they appealed to my ego. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, next thing, next thing I know, there I was, uh, the spokesperson for Ivy Park's rodeo series. Fantastic. And that's how it Incredible. Fantastic. That's a great story. 